A quick intro. Uh, I am from AWS, uh, ProServe, Professional Services. I am a senior practice manager. My background is all in financial services. I and my team built uh, specialized offerings, uh, solutions for our customers. And this ransomware protection is one of the solutions we have built. But having said that, as Ron was mentioning, uh, the the ideas we will discuss in this in today's presentation can be used in any with any cloud provider, right? You can use that in Azure, GCP, OCI, wherever uh, that you can use that. Also, you will see a lot of references to financial services customers. Uh, ransomware attack is very pervasive right now. It, it can at, it it is actually attacking all industries. Uh, but the the criticality of recovery right is more so in 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 the regulated industries uh, if i may say so whether it be it's financial services or be it healthcare so you know there's, there's a lot of things we'll talk about uh, in, in this in this presentation stay tuned in uh, and hopefully we'll have some time to uh, questions and and answers so you know we talked about uh, ransomware right uh, and, and as Eric pointed out, uh, there are typically uh, three aspects of any any challenge we have. We, we have the people, process, and technology. Eric and and recently Martin also also pointed out the you know the people part of it. Right now, let's look at uh, you know how the process and technology uh, preparedness play a role in in ransomware protection. Uh, uh, so far, uh, it, it was cited by Eric as well. Right, they have pr uh, provided a report that these attacks are increasing 64% uh, of organizations are uh, you know uh, uh, you know having a ransomware attack but in sophos there was very interesting uh, mention that even when the organizations uh, decided to pay the ransomware they could recover only 60% of the data right so uh, you know that's forcing some of the regulators to now come out that they are actually making it for example in australia they are coming out with the regulation where they're making it illegal to pay a, a ransomware protection money. Because uh, in, in, in one of the reports from Sophos itself, the total, uh, you know, the value of ransomware attack uh, is, is a couple of trillion dollars. It actually is more than the entire drug trade, drug trade taken together. So it's, it's a huge problem, right? And as, as we see, right, uh, we have to be prepared end to end. And we'll talk about it in a, in a second. So what is cyber uh, recovery, right? What happens when, you know, uh, you have, you know, endpoints or routers or firewalls, all of them have been compromised by this ransomware attack. Now, it can be ransomware attack due to a malicious actor, a, a, a state, or even, uh, you know, good-hearted uh, employees, but an accidental deletion, right? What happens when you're an, when you are hit with a catastrophic event? right? How do you recover? Because at that point of time, it is your ex existential threat, right? Everything else you have tried, you know, whether it's failing over to another region, all the backups and recovery and all those things, they have all failed, right? How do you then stand up your business? What is that last line of defense you have? That's the cyber recovery what, and that's what we will talk about uh, in a second. AWS is partnering with various regulators across the industry and across the world, uh, you know, uh, for preparing for this ransomware attack. Uh, there is Sheltered Harbor, which is by the industry, for the industry prep. But as you see, uh, you have, uh, you know, CMORG, you have DORA in EMEA, you have NYDFS being applicable uh, some uh, in November this year. Uh, Hong Kong PRA is coming up with the, with the regulation. So the point is, you know, it is the ransomware attack is not just a business and a and a and a reputational threat. It is very quickly becoming a regulatory threat slash risk as well. An example regulation is NYDFS Part Five Hundred. Uh, this is for applicable to all Class A institutions uh, operating out of NY City, right? Which will be any financial services customer, or maybe some other uh, healthcare customers and others, right? So this regulation is applicable to you. What it is saying is that you not only have to prepare for data retention, but you also need to prepare for security of apps and infrastructure and operational resiliency, and then prove your preparedness to the auditors on an yearly basis. Right? This is this regulation is coming out hard 
And it's, it's one of the very critical concerns for our uh, FinCEF customers, especially because I come from that vertical, but I'm sure it is for others as well. A similar regulation would be applicable. An equivalent uh, regulation on the EMEA side is the is the DORA regulation, right? Digital and Operational Resiliency Act, right? Which is also talking about putting together a risk management framework, you know, preparing for your operational resiliency, being able to recover from that catastrophic uh, event right, uh, uh, and be available to be audited on a yearly basis. So ransomware is not, doesn't only, you know, threaten your business and your reputation, it's, uh, it's, it's a regulatory risk as well. The point is you are doing a recovery only or focusing on recovery only is not enough. You have to be prepared end to end because you will not be able to recover unless you have prepared for that end-to-end -end, uh, preparedness. And we'll talk in a second about what that end-to-end -end preparation looks like. We just talked about this, I will move on. Uh, so what are the, so there are two aspects of uh, preparedness, right? One aspect is you use the native AWS services and for that matter, any other cloud provider services. Those are services which you can use. Uh, to build that immutability of uh, of the of the data but then there is another aspect of building solutions right services alone are not solutions so there is so solutions are built using services and some of the aws services this is a, a mapping of services of uh, according to nist framework uh, nist nist framework i'm sure everyone is uh, aware of that so these are a mapping and you will have a, a slide deck with you uh, for for reference, so I will not spend time. This is a very dense slide. However, on the there are specific storage services, uh, right, which talk about the immutability of data, which is one of the key requirements for the regulators that your data has to be stored in a tertiary vault, which is which which is immutable, right? So, three services we have uh, off the uh, uh, rack right now in AWS is uh, Amazon FSx for NetApp. You know, which has a you know CFTC certified by CFTC. We have Amazon S3, which is an object storage and has an object lock as well. It is certified by SEC, and then we have the AWS Backup Vault, uh, you know, which is certified by FINRA and SEC and CFTC as well. So the next question would be: Okay, now I understand there are services which I can use directly for immutability of data for my vaulting purpose. But how do I build a vault? How do I how do I Proof to regulators that I have the ability to not only be able to store my data in an immutable vault, but also be able to extract data and stand up my infrastructure and show that I am ready for that catastrophic event. That's where AWS ProServ uh, can uh, come in and help. Uh, this is uh, uh, an end-to-end -end reference architecture from our uh, uh, viewpoint. Uh, it starts with the protection layer uh, on the extreme left-hand side, where you have an application stack, uh, you know, obviously protected by AWS security services, which then feed uh, all their infrastructure logs and application logs and network logs all into uh, a data lake, which is the golden source of data feeding into an incident detection layer. Incident detection layer would comprise of uh, observability solutions, and uh, in our solution, we have a you know a Gen AI based uh, querying tool essentially for the SOC engineer to also query uh, you know what is going on right now. Why this is critical? It is absolutely critical that you be aware when the ransomware attack is happening, because you will that's the best time to collect the forensic evidence you know whether it's doing a code dump or in aws parlance taking taking an ame snapshot you will need to do that uh, you know uh, while the attack is happening or as soon as possible uh, uh, thereafter right the next layer is the incident uh, uh, response layer right now the hope here is that uh, all our customers would have automated the incident detection to incident response layer, right? As soon as they, they sense that, uh, you know, a ransomware attack is happening, they would automatically kick off some of the incident response, be it setting up a war room or be, invo be it invoking of the uh, DR solution, say a multi-region uh, failover or, or a multi-AZ failover, be it, or be it recovering from backups. 
Now, once the so this is at the incident detection level, right? Uh, now, when all of that preparedness has is is kind of useless, you can't recover from that. That's where the last line of defense, that cyber vault, comes into picture because that cyber vault will have data which will be able which will enable you to recover your business and when i when i say data it is not just the data in your databases right it is your data which will be required to stand up your application infrastructure it will be it will obviously be data from your databases and you know from your file system fsx and all those things but it, it can also be say your uh, operating system images for example if you are a, a low latency shop you would have customized your uh, operating system images right you would want to store them in an immutable vault because those images are required when you want to build up your uh, low latency infrastructure so that comprises of data of, the, of data this is an end to end uh, I would say tenet of uh, how to build a, a, a vaulting solution. Uh, there is, it's divided into multiple zones uh, so as to keep the infection uh, contained. The ingress zone is where the data lands, right? The data then goes into the analytic zone where you analyze for the infection, whether it's corruption or it's malware and all those things. The idea is that once it, once the validation checks are done from in the analytic zone, only then, and it passes the validation checks, only then the data goes into vault. So the vault will hopefully never have an, an infected data uh, in, in, in its storage. The next layer is the vault zone, obviously, which has the, the immutable vault, uh, immutable uh, data storage, where you will essentially uh, have all that data. And then the forensic zone is, is the zone where you will take out the data and, and do some forensics on it. For example, if you have taken an AMI snapshot or operating system uh, core dump uh, from a Linux world, uh, you will take out that dump and analyze. Your, your security team may want to analyze. Your, your regulators may want to analyze. That's what you do in forensic zone. And then the last zone is the egress zone, which is the zone where you will take out the data and you will set up a temporary infrastructure. You will load up that data in that in the temporary infrastructure, run some synthetic queries, prove to your stakeholders that the data is available and usable. Right? That's that kind of completes the full vaulting solution uh, in in our view. So this is the last slide. Uh, you know. Uh, this is very high level introduction to ransomware protection. You know, obviously reach out to your AWS account team if you want to have a more detailed discussion on how AWS can help you, you know, uh, prepare for ransomware protection, uh, uh, preparedness, not protection, but preparedness, uh, and we'll be happy to engage. Uh, any questions I can take uh, at this point? 